for our Christmas carol service. It's wonderful to see so many of you with us joining us on this joyful occasion, which celebrates both coming to the end of this Michaelmas term and celebrates our own preparations for the great Christmas season. Um, like all my favorite services, this is an um, all-bangers carol service. I promise that absolutely every single one of the carols will be well known to you. And so I'm very much looking forward to hearing some very rousing singing indeed from the congregation. I haven't quite got my paddle to hold up marks out of 10, but I'm sure you will impress one another very much indeed. I hope you enjoy this service and our great time of celebration together. As you leave at the end of the service, please do give your order of service to us again and we'll make sure it's recycled and there'll also be a retiring collection for the work of the chapel and the choir. And if you'd like to give to that, I'd encourage you to do so generously. So for now, let's keep a moment of stillness and quiet as we wait for the choir to join us before our service begins.
beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity within the church he came to build, and especially in this college and in the Diocese of Oxford. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to be make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loid cloths for themselves. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim, and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Thanks be to God.
for reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many may come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I will make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and that shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Thanks be to God.
prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Thanks be to God. In a moment, we're going to stand and sing the great Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. But as the more eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed, immediately after that carol, we're going to sing the carol Away in a Manger, a carol that we have to sing because it's Father Darren, the assistant chaplain's favorite Christmas carol. And it's very important that we do it well. And so the Sopranos have kindly volunteered to sing the first verse for us. But they told me before the service that they're a little bit nervous about doing this on their own. And they would appreciate a little bit of help. And so as I came in, I noticed that there were a few families and a few children in our congregation today. And I thought they might like to come up to the front and join in with the first verse with our sopranos in the choir and be part of the Keeble College Choir, a wonderful opportunity to have. And so, as they climb over people, you can bring an, bring an adult with you if you want to, as they climb over people and make their way to the front, we're all going to stand and sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
way in a manger. make their way back to their seats they definitely deserve a round of applause a reading from the gospel according to saint luke in the, sixth in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the house to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in the bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, 
praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? They observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, so it's been written by the prophet, 
and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd many my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its riding until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. and practice and I want to pay tribute and give enormous thanks to Chris 
to Dan and Ed, and to the wonderful people of our college choir, who provide such wonderful music for us every single week of the year, and particularly have worked exceptionally hard in the last seven days, bringing um, Advent and Christmas to, to us in such a wonderful way. And I also want to say thank you to all the chapel helpers who do things that are often unseen, but without whom the chapel would not look like this. You would not have been welcomed, you would not have been given an order of service, and certainly we wouldn't be streaming our service today to thousands of people around the world online. They do such a lot for us, and I am so phenomenally grateful to them. And I wonder if we could just acknowledge all their work now, this term, and especially this week, with a round of applause. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.